Hello, minders. Welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor. I'm going to do a brief review for you today. I uh, just wanted to look at this set myself uh, because, <laughs> like I am most times, I was just curious. I've watched several reviews on this set. This is the uh, Pit Graphite Matte pencil set. These were introduced last year. I'm actually kind of late to the party. There are several reviews on YouTube if you want to see them. What they've done is they've taken a graphite pencil, made it blacker and less shiny. <laughs> I've already sharpened these to a long point. You can see it. This is the 6B. It's an interesting idea. It's a problem that I know exists, but uh, not something I ever really sought to solve or wondered about. The shininess of graphite, you know, when you put a lot of it down. You know, when this set came out, it's like, okay, yeah, I guess somebody may have a problem with that. It, it was never really a problem with me. What did intrigue me about this set was the fact that uh, it goes up to 14B. HB2, B4, B6, B8, B10, B12, B14, B. And there's nothing harder than an HB. But again, I was intrigued by the fact that there was a 10, a 12, and a 14B. And I think typically what you'll see as the darkest graphite is usually around eight. I've even seen a 9B. So uh, I like that idea. And of course, uh, this being a watercolor channel, I wondered how they would work with watercolor. I like to draw in pencil and then do some watercolor wash over it. It's that sort of tinted graphite look. This is uh, a typical graphite set. This is their their Castell 9000 art set. I'll just flip it over and you can see this set goes from 8B down to 2H. So it has uh, the HB, but it also has the FH and 2H. But still, it interested me. So I did some swatching. I didn't want to subject you to all the tedious swatching that all the other reviews seem to do. So it's already done, but let's look at it and talk about it. Here's the uh, Pit Graphite Matte set all swatched out. And on these swatches, uh, I used uh, light to medium pressure. I didn't go for maximum density. I did here on these little squares. That's like as much of the uh, graphite as I could put down. And then I did uh, a little bit of a squiggle or a line with each one. The lower half here is using the blending stump, which comes with the set if you buy that set, just to see how it's smeared. And you can even see I did a little water test over this densest part, just to see how much it traveled with the water. On those tests, uh, the blending or smearing and the water tests, I really could tell no difference from regular graphite. Here down here is the Faber-Castell 9000 set. And I just matched up those pencils that were like the uh, Pit Graphite matte set. HP 2B, 4B, 6B, and 8B. And that's as far as it goes. So we have some uh, unique things here with the 10, 12, and the 14B. My understanding from uh, listening to comments on other reviews is that what they've done is they have mixed graphite with carbon. So basically you have a graphite charcoal pencil hybrid, if you will. That's my understanding. I don't know how accurate that is. It's a, it seems to be a pretty nice formula. This, these leads almost look like colored pencil leads and they're nice and hard. Uh, now in putting them down, they do seem softer than standard graphite, but I had no problem sharpening them in an electric sharpener. Here you see my nice sharp long point. And I really liked the velvety smooth lay down. I thought that was nice. But frankly, I can get that with graphite too. So this is one of those things that it's like, do I think this is a product, you know, I really, really recommend you get? No, not really. If you're a heavy pencil artist, you do a lot of pencil, uh, it, it'd probably be worth your time to try it. Uh, right here is a test that I did comparing... Uh, a dense lay down, similar to these little squares. But I wanted to compare the shininess. And that's what all of the reviews that I've seen seem to do. It's like, oh, look, this is really mad. Oh, look, that's really shiny. You know, again, that's not a big deal to me, but uh, I will demonstrate it. Cause here, if I reflect it in the light, you can see that it does cut down on that reflectivity quite a bit. If I get the shine, take it out of the light where I get the shine off of it, 
there's really not any difference in darkness. In fact, I was able to get a little more, it seems like, on the 9000, the Castell 9000 down, it seemed a little darker. But what you have is this, it goes up to this 14B, which is marginally darker, like putting down black colored pencil. But you know, you really kind of have to get it down very dense and heavy because if I'm looking at these with just medium pressure uh, and a gradient where I'm not trying for the maximum density, there's not a whole lot of shine. There's a little bit, I guess. My density has brought me to you. What? So you know my philosophy. I'm, I'm just as happy to show you something that you don't need as to show you something that you do need or may want to try. You have to decide whether any of that's ever been a problem. I am most interested in the 10, 12, and 14B as that will uh, allow me a little bit of extra depth. I'm your density. And you can see uh, in just medium pressure, you can see the 8B and you can achieve a good bit darker without a lot of pressure. And it's darker in the lower pressure strokes. And so in those light strokes, you do get a little more depth and density. It is what it is. Just in general, as a graphite pencil, I really loved them. I would say that uh, probably given a choice, um, I would probably have picked these to draw with over these. All right, so um, I thought I would do a little drawing, drawing of a hand, put them more to the test in a real life situation, and then we're gonna do some watercolor over that drawing. Your hands. What about them? They're quite exquisite. Yeah, well, <laughs> that remains to be seen. I'll do my best. So I'm going to draw and paint in this B watercolor sketchbook. It's 100% cotton. I'll include a link if I can, but they've been kind of hard to find. Here's the hand I'm using as my reference. Got this from Proco in their model pack on hands. You'll probably find something free, though, if you want to do a hand. And we're just going to start out with the HB and block it in. Um, actually, I'm going to block it in and uh, establish the entire value pattern with the HB. I'm not going to use every pencil in the set. I'm going to use the HB and then eventually I'm going to jump to the 14B. And then we're going to do some watercolor washes over that. I just want to get a sense of how these do in a real, you know, extensive drawing session i guess you might say hands are difficult you know if you have trouble with hands you are not alone uh, hands are really really hard to draw especially detailed close-up hands like this i mean there's just something about them uh, I, I i find them sometimes harder than drawing faces and to get them to look really convincing there's a weird thing about drawing hands that uh, when you start to draw them um, and you pretty much get the main shapes blocked in. They look weird. Uh, sometimes they start looking not right, you know, when maybe they are. So as I lay in these value patterns, uh, when you draw with pencil, and I'm sure everybody knows this, these are your highlights. They don't just correct. Erasers uh, provide the highlights as well. So I have, you know, the electric eraser, that Tombow Mini, and of course a kneaded eraser. Again, working my way across the whole thing, uh, you know, once I get all the proportions the way I want them. Uh, with hands, the values really make a difference because uh, sometimes fingers will just look twisted or not quite right until you get the correct values in there. I wanted to try that little blending stump, too, that came with the set. I don't normally use a blending stump. If you can probably tell from, from the drawing, I like to use a very linear feel um, to my drawings. Uh, that comes from so many years of doing pen and ink. Oh, by the way, I'm up to the 14B now. All of the value pattern I thought I had established the way I wanted it. And now I'm going through and darkening the darkest areas. I just jumped all the way to the 14B. Normally, if I'm going to do a very extensive drawing, I would step through the other hardnesses and just get an overall smooth. But again, because of the way I draw and using almost a linear hatching method, very similar to pen and ink, 
uh, it, it this is going to be fine. And I will be filling in a lot of the tone with watercolor. So yeah, just going through, popping in those deepest values, darkening some of the middle values. Really like the pencils. I mean, uh, they're they're very smooth and velvety to use a little softer than a standard graphite and here's what i'm going to watercolor with i thought that i might use color but changed my mind i want to keep this monochromatic you probably saw my video portrait uh some weeks back where i used the schminka liquid charcoal and i thought okay let's do this again now this time um i'm just going to use it for some middle values here and there blend it out just try to get those values and that light pattern on the hand a little more accurate i switched to this escota prado uh, it's just a synthetic brush and a smaller brush the silver brush black velvet i had been using was a little too limp and i like to paint over graphite like this almost dry uh, not very wet in other words now i finished all the watercolor washes and I really wanted to keep this looking like a drawing, so I decided to go back over everything with uh, some hatching just to keep it uh, very linear looking, very drawn, very textural. I don't always do that, but I just like the way it looked. All right, well, I'm pretty much done, and I like it. I don't know about exquisite, but I'm satisfied. <laughs> Hope you all enjoyed that. Thank you, patrons, for all your support. We'll see you in the next video.